I want to join uh, Senator Reid of Rhode Island, who just spoke um, very persuasively about, certainly about the need to freeze interest rates for Stafford loans for college students in America, and also spoke, I thought, very convincingly about closing a tax loophole that, uh, that has clearly been uh, used to avoid, legally, but to avoid taxes by lobbyists, consulting groups, some lawyers, all of whom are making, uh, are using this tax loophole uh, to, to the tune of, of tens of thousands of dollars in many cases. The case of former Senator John Edwards and his law firm, not like most law firms, but in his law firm and, and former Speaker Newt Gingrich, one a Democrat, one a Republican, has shown the, the, the size of this loophole and how it can turn into tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, again, legally, I'm not accusing either of these gentlemen of, of illegal activity, only taking advantage, advantage of a loophole that, that we should close. But I come to the floor today more to make the case for how important these Stafford loans, these subsidized Stafford loans are for college students. And uh, my state of Ohio, similar to the presiding officer state of North Carolina, we have um, lots and lots of, of uh, hundreds of thousands of students that um, use these Stafford subsidized loans. In Ohio, it's some 380,000. I assume in North Carolina, it's a number not too far off of that. Uh, students that have seen, have, have enjoyed, if that's the right word, 3.4% interest rates on their loans rather than something higher. And, and what, what's, what's discouraging, Madam President, is that this is a... Um, this was a bipartisan effort. In 2007, the year I came to the Senate, uh, the student, the, the, the President Bush and Democrats, majority in both houses, joining with many of our Republican colleagues in this body and the House of Representatives, locked in the student loan, subsidized Stafford loan rate of 3.4% for five years, from 2007 until this July. That expires in July. It was bipartisan then. It should be bipartisan now. but. A couple of days ago, the Republicans filibustered. I'm hopeful today that, or whenever this next vote's taken, that they won't. And I encourage students, I'm going to, for just three or four minutes, uh, Madam President, read a, a small number of letters and stories that I've gotten from students in my state of Ohio who have come to my website and told us their story. And I urge people watching today from Ohio to come to this website. It's, um, it's brown.senate.gov slash college loan stories, brown.senate.gov slash college loan stories. And just tell us your story, because the more, I think, Madam President, I, I'm not so cynical that I, I think that when my colleagues start listening to people at home, listening to students, I, I was at Wright State in Dayton the other day, near, near Dayton, and University of Cincinnati, and Ohio State in Columbus, and Cuyahoga Community College in Cleveland, and I met with students and listened to their stories, and several of them stood up and talked about what these, these student loans mean. And you know, already the average student, the average student that graduates from an Ohio four-year university um, graduates with debt of, a, of, of about $27,000. That means it's much harder for them to start a family, to buy a, a car, to buy a home, uh, to start a business. And that's why it's so important not to heap more burden on them, put more debt on them. And I'll just close, Madam President, with reading three letters. Cody from Delphus, Ohio, went Northwest Ohio. I graduated high school with the goal in mind to get my doctorate in pharmacy. After five years of hard work, I'm nine months of practice rotations away from achieving my goal. Along with that achievement comes a paralyzing amount of college debt from attending a private university. I have hopes of doing an additional two years of residency to specialize in critical care trauma, but since residency's paid less than half of a pharmacist's salary, I may not be able to go further and reach that goal. Help me reach my goals by keeping interest rates low, by helping create affordable means by which these low-income families can attend college without having to accumulate the debt I have had to. Allow youth to reach their full potential and be able to serve society in their best capacity by finding a solution to the rising cost of an education. Nanya from Worcester, Ohio, east of where I grew up in Mansfield, about 30 miles away, writes, going to college changed my life. The only reason I even considered going to college because my mom did. The only reason, reason she was able to go was for student loans. Because my oldest daughter saw my mom and me doing it, she's now attending college. My family had a rough beginning. My mom and I survived sexual abuse and the disease of addiction before finding a solution. School has been her way out. 
My mom now has a bachelor's, is working as a licensed social worker. I'm on my way to a bachelor's as well. How can I in good conscience say to my daughter, go to college if I know she'll never be able to pay off their loans? I'm a student assistant at Wayne College. If it weren't for the availability of school loans, I'd never have stepped foot in the building that is now the center of my world and my daughter's world. We go to school to make a better life for ourselves. In Rebecca from Lorraine, where I lived for many years near, near Lake Erie, when I matriculated at Lawrence University, a private liberal arts college in Wisconsin, my family couldn't afford to contribute more than a few hundred dollars a year to my tuition. I was Pell Grant eligible. I took out Stafford loans. I also took out a private loan from my parents' credit union. I committed to the full number of hours of federal work study that I was eligible for. Even as a freshman, I was deeply aware that the Pell Grant, Stafford loans, and federal work study programs were giving me access to an excellent education that would, be, would have been beyond my reach. I've worked hard in my classes. I graduated Phi Beta Kappa and Summa Cum Laude in two majors, chemistry and English. I worked hard in extra in co-curricular activities. I edited the College Literary Magazine, served as president of the campus feminist organization. I worked hard in my on-campus jobs, grading papers, tutoring, uh, mixing reagents in the chemistry stock room, washing dishes in a student union diner. I chose to go to graduate school in chemistry. I got a PhD in Stanford in 2003. I'm now a tenured professor of chemistry at Oberlin College in Ohio. I teach bright young people who are interested in making the world a better place. I also conduct research in ovarian cancer detection that's been funded by the National Institutes of Health. It breaks my heart to think if I were a high school senior today, I might not have the same opportunities to achieve. Stafford loans, Pell Grants, federal work study programs. I mean, these three letters, Madam President, I just, these were not dif different from the others. I just picked the top three that my staff gave me from stories that we've gotten because of our website. And I'll repeat the website again. It's, Sherrod, it's, it's Brown Senate gov slash college loan stories. But this tells you about work ethic, it tells you about opportunity, and I, I, would, I would illustrate it in one other way, not as, I, I can't do it as well as Nanya and Rebecca and Cody did, but we all remember, if we pay attention to American history, in the 1940s and 50s, the, 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 the GI Bill gave literally millions of young American men and women returning from serving their country the opportunity to go to school. And what the, what the GI Bill did was help millions of individual Americans one at a time. But what that did collectively is it raised all boats. It created a huge amount of prosperity for our country because all these people went to college. A lot of these people bought homes. A lot of these, the, the, the colleges were growing and expanding, creating more jobs. These people started businesses. These people were productive workers. These people invented things because they had the education to go to college. So with these Stafford loans, it's not just helping Cody and Rebecca and Rebecca's students today and and Nanya, it's also helping all of us as a society, whether you go to college or not. Some people don't want to go to college, fine. We have career centers and trade schools and community colleges to learn welding, to learn um, carpentry, to learn how to be a healthcare worker, uh, to learn rad tech or whatever people want to do or to go to a four-year college. Give them that opportunity because we don't just help millions of individual Americans or millions of individual young people. We help society as a whole when we do this and I just, Pray and beg my colleagues, please pass this. Keep student loan rates manageable, interest rates manageable, so we can have more, more Rebecca's and Nanya's and Cody's in our country. We will all benefit. Madam President, I suggest the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. 